All right, ladies and gentlemen. Holy shit. Did you ever think you would see me playing another Ace Attorney game? Seriously. Uh, it's been five years. Five years since I played a Phoenix Wright game. And I played three of these previously. I played Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright Justice for All, and then when it was a new release on the Nintendo 3DS, I played Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton. Or was it Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright? Whatever. Um, so I played three games in the Phoenix Wright series previously. And I like them. They're visual novels, pretty much. But I never played one in five years. And then this actually won a poll last year. It was a game for me to play. And I heard the HD collection of Phoenix Wright was coming out. I said, I will hold off until this HD collection comes out. And I will play it then. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. After a five-year hiatus, Phoenix Wright returns. That's right. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories. Probably, it's probably going to be... I'm thinking like flashbacks, you remember everything. For my five just said 100 bit cheer. And he says something really stupid that I'm not gonna read. Okay. <laughs> Play Turnabout Memories? Yes. Alright. First steps, I should get a trophy. Huff, huff. Arr! How did I get into this mess? Oh, it looks like everything is redrawn in HD. Why? Why did I do that? <laughs> that girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. She's got a dick. Whoa, stop it. I don't need to know that. Don't talk about her like that. <laughs> and he bitch slapped him. He bitch slapped the shit out of the guy. God damn. Oh, look at this shirt. A pea and a heart. It, it wasn't me. I didn't. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Someone shot him in his temple. It wasn't me. Then he stabbed him in his asshole. It wasn't me. Five years earlier, Mia Faye's second trial. April 11th, 9.40 a.m. District Court. Defendant lobby number three. Woo, it's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Ahem. Oh, my God. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, good morning. Oh, Mia, please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I'm relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me, I'm relaxed. Grumph. Let go of my lapels. Grumph. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I, uh, I'm sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? <clears throat> well, never you fear, my dear. I'm Marvin Grossberg at Metro Service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me. What with your earnest request last night? Let me handle this case, you suddenly said, and quite forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday about the case, I mean. What? Uh, and you already learned all the relevant facts? Well, about that. You see, I mean, uh, of course I have, I think. Oh, dear. In any case, don't let your client see you're so nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. <clears throat> Cough, shivel. Good morning there, everybody. Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, er, I just want to say I'll give it all I've got. Yep, I'll be fine. No prob. What the fuck? Cough a chew a chew. Thank you, DJ Bruno, for the cheer. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? You have a cold or something, Mr. Rye? Actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers. People screw it up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. My doc says this way I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. <laughs> right, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. <laughs> if you're truly innocent, I promise I will save you. <sighs> Please, let go of my shirt. That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name is Mia Faye. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. 
But that trial traumatized me so badly, I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm going to win. For my client and for myself. Why is Phoenix, young Phoenix Wright, wearing a heart sweatshirt with a P inside? And it's pink. <laughs> April 11th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. All right. All right, shout out to Woonwalkman, who uh, just took me $6. He says, hi, Phil. I'm hyped for you in Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney Gameplay. I watched all your earlier games. It was fantastic. Do voice acting, or I will send you and your parents a big cardboard objection. Please at least do the rubble, rubble, have fun. We'll see. But thank you, Woonwalkman. You're the top tipper of the day. $6. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's continue. Rubble, 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 rubble. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. Oh, <laughs> the defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense today is Ms. Ms. Uh, Mia Fey, was it? Oh, Mercedes. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to be the leading the defense. Uh, yes, well, uh, you see... Mr. Grossberg had a bit of an emergency. Emergency? What? Isn't that him standing there right next to you? You can't mistake him. He's a giant hippo of a man. And he smells of baloney. Yes, well. You, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? You wouldn't want me to give you a lump of coal in your stocking, would you? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, 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 uh, I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl, it'll all be over soon. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? By the way, thank you for my five for a hundred bit cheer. He says, do you use the product tux? I don't even know what that means. Thank you for the cheer, I have no idea what that means. DJ Runo cheer, he said, is it kind of weird? It is kind of weird since we are still alive. This place in the past, in the earlier games, Maya was the inspiration for the TV series called Pink Princess. I guess Phoenix is wearing a shirt for that. I have no idea. Hyperior21 did a 100-bit cheer, and he said, Congrats on your wedding and your marriage. Wishing you and Kat all the best. Thank you very much, Hyperior. Real Talk Mommy did a 100-bit cheer. And he said something about Mia I don't even understand. And, uh, let's see. Pagar Cerdo took me a dollar. He says, you're a now that you're a married man, I feel like your maturity level has increased by 500. You're now in an even better position to put the detractors in their place, put those children in their place, and enjoy Phoenix Wright. Okay, then. Now, then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. He was a fourth-year student studying pharmacology. Hmm. Sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, uh, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Like I was playing with his toupee. Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body and the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway. They called the police. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence. So this is the crime took place behind the Ivy U building. Okay. Okay. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> the reputation for sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. The truth is that this victim died under a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? A simple question. I thought it might loosen you up a bit. I'm a genteel man, if you will. Uh, a what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Ah, perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause, go on. Please say you know at least this much. I'm so sorry, I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Groan. My hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Oh! That's something we didn't need to know. 
Why in the holy hell is that in the game? If you're gonna be an HD re remaster, take that line out. I don't need to know about a fat dude's disgusting swollen hemorrhoids. Now see here, the details of the case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? Ah, the court record. I think I can see that by pressing the R1 button. What the hell? Unlimited breadsticks took me a dollar. Just tell us the story of how you crapped your pants at Olive Garden? I didn't. In fact, I've only eaten at Olive Garden, I think, three times in my entire life. So, that didn't happen. You must be thinking of somebody else. Okay, R1. There's the attorney's badge proving my profession. The first and last time I wore it was a year ago. The Doug's autopsy report. Cause of death was a fatal electric shock. And the crime, or the picture, you can check. So the electric shock must have come from that hanging power line. Okay. All the weapons we need can be found in the court record. Take a good hard look at the data there and think carefully before you answer, buddy. Well, yes, sir. I'll do just that. I've got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. I just pressed the R1 button here. Now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the question? How did he die? Did he get run over by a reindeer? Like Grandma? Electrocution. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. What's that? Why, motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator, if you catch my drift. They don't call him the Ricky Killer for nothing, you know. <clears throat> now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Evidence? Ah, no need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and then shove it in Old Greybeard's face. Yes, sir, in the Old Greybeard's face. Uh, Mr. Grossman, try to set a better example for the young lady. Mia, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are there as well. You can toggle between profiles and evidence with the R1 button, so be sure to go over it all. Oh, yeah? Aha! Uh -huh. So we got Grossberg, who's my superior and the head of the Grossberg Law Office. Wow! A very, very, very young Phoenix Wright. He's only 21 years old in this game. My client, a third-year art university at Ivy... Uh, art student at Ivy University. He currently has a cold... So to swallow age 22, the victim, he was a fourth year pharmacology student at Ivy University. Dahlia Hawthorne, age 20, Phoenix Wright's girlfriend, dated the victim Doug Swallow up until eight months ago. And Winston Payne, age 49, the prosecutor for the trial, a veteran lawyer with a little too much confidence. All right. Shout out to Wanyib. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Just tell us the story of how you craft your pants at Olive Garden. I don't know what this is. This, this has to be some kind of a meme. And Tor Vidley also took the dollars to the same thing. See, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. This has got to be someone else's meme, and they're trying to bring it into the stream chat, so. Thanks for your contributions, but I'm just going to ignore it. Okay. Now then, let's see what you got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? Here we go. Take that! Take that! The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was the woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up at least on that much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Up until about eight months ago, she was the victim, Mr. S she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. Clearly, she has some part to play in this story. Rubble, 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 rubble. Hmm. Ah, he's done it again. Before this cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. For my five to the 200 bit cheers, do I listen to Mayhem? I don't know what the hell that is. What's Mayhem? Never heard of him. TJ Runo cheers that this Payne guy wants to challenge your hairline. Do you really want to let that go, get, go over your head? Objection, objection, objection. Objection. Okay. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. 
What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Faye? It's fine. After all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. <sighs> I don't know why I'm yawning. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes. My name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, uh, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. No, no. He means what did you do before you were arrested? Oh, uh, achoo, achoo, achoo. I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you are... What? Huh? I skipped shit. I skipped it. I pressed the button. And it, it read it as a button double input. Well, that sucks. He says, but I, I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you I was a chew, a chew, cough, cough, a chew. <laughs> but the defendant please refrain from passing on his cold to the rest of us. It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Hmm. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor. For my five, no, I did not get a tattoo. All right, the victim and I, here comes our first testimony of the entire game. Um, I, I admit I was there, but I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Okay. Hmm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim? Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. Whew, looks like the judge understands. Huh, you're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? He 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 he. It seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be? This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right, and it's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. Hers is to determine if a witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? When a witness is lying, their statements will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is your client, in court, all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just now? That there was a lie or a contradiction? No, then. Your cross-examination, if you please, Miss Faye. Please, Mr. Wright. Tell me you haven't been lying. Okay. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? All right, cross-examination. All right, the victim and I. Um, I admit I was there, so I could press with L1. I'm not a killer, all I do is find his body. Hold it! So you found the body, so who called the police? Huh? Uh, a chew, call, a chew, a chew. Unfortunately, it was some other students that notified the police. Other students? That's correct, they were witnesses. Witnesses who saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. Rebel, 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 rebel. What? Is this true, Mr. Wright? Oh, you seizing. Did you stop seizing every time you're in a bind? Well, uh, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body, but I... I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Hold it! Uh, hold it. So you didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right. Um, well, no. That's it, that is, I mean. So, which is it? Did you know him or not? And now he sneezes again. Now, see here. You can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day. Er, uh, well, I guess I did know his name. News to me. Why didn't he tell me that before? Uh, I heard he used to date Dolly. Who is this Dolly person? Ah, yes, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see, uh, uh, young love. So bittersweet. You know, I and Mrs. Claus once a year retreat, uh, retreat to uh, an igloo in the back. Uh, we light a few candles, some aromatherapy. We strip down naked, we rub our bodies in fine oils. Objection! But that's all I knew about it. <laughs> I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Mr. Wright, you stated in your following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? And he says, Well, Mr. Wright, 
Ah, uh, no, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear. Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. <clears throat> How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? <clears throat> yes, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Did you see it at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean? Uh, yes, that's right. I saw it at the crime scene. That's why, that's why I figured you must love British stuff, see? It's true, cross my heart. I swear I didn't do it. He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate last night. May I ask you something, Miss Faye? Yes, uh, you, your honor, what is it now? Who is this person anyway, this Union Jack fellow? The Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Oh, uh, I see, so you mean like the Stars and Stripes, right? Uh, Mr. Kringle was never very good at, uh, you know, geography or any of that kind of stuff, so I, I didn't know that. <laughs> As usual, Your Honor, your insight astounds me. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? The yeah, there's a contradiction here. Mr. Grossberg, quickly now, show that you boy you mean business with evidence. Okay, we need to check the court record carefully. There's no Union Jack on his back. Look. Yeah, it's not there. So that's the objection right there. Over well, here, do you think you can manage on your own from this point? I can handle it. One year ago, I was in a courtroom just like this. I can do it. I can handle this myself. Murr. You mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew me in. I'll be fine. I know what I have to do. Remember, you can always press him to get more information. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to state a contradiction, make sure you possess some definitive proof. Okay, Mia, one more time from the very beginning of his testimony. All right. And when I was there, I'm not a killer. All I do is find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never really talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Here we go. Objection! Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. But it's right there on his back. Miss Faye, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. Well, if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You have no idea what he was wearing underneath the jacket! Mr. Wright? You've been lying to me! You're a worthless piece of shit! Donkey shit! Please forgive me! Wah! Rubble, rubble, rubble! What a wimp wearing a pink sweatshirt and crying in court. Haha! <laughs> Mia, you made our client cry! Let him! That pee on his chest is the same for Phoenix anyways! I can't believe I trusted him! Mr. Wright is all wrong! Hehehehe! <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination! Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh-oh. Did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, uh, yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took an over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. It kills colds good. Hey, wait a second. How did you know that I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? Does this even have anything to do with the case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from the crime scene. What's this? The, the victim's hand? It's, uh... The Cold Killer X! Yes, but even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it! What? Rubble, 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 rubble! Setting his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine, dropped it by Mr. Wright, and hid it in his hand. 
purpose by doing so could only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Rubble, rubble. Order, order in my court. Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept this into the record. Crime photo two added to the court record. Court killer X added to the court record. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? Ugh. This is really bad. Oh, my buttocks, my poor, poor hemorrhoids. <laughs> okay, new testimony. What really happened? Okay. The truth is, I went because he called me. He was in a pharma car he was in the pharmaco <sighs> he was in the pharmacology department. So he agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. We talked for a bit and then around 3 o'clock we split up. Then later when I went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days. But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Shout out to Yuhiyaku who just subscribed to the channel for five months. Thank you, Yuhiyaku, for a five month resell. Okay, Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony that you gave previously. And so he goes into a seizing fit again. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Hmm. Miss Faye, please begin your cross examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright. Don't tell any more lies. One thing I want to look at is this new photo. So... What time is that saying? It's upside down, right? So that would be 3... That would be th like 3.05. The watch stopped around 3.05, it looks like. Or 3.05 or 3... Yeah, around 3.05, I would say. So according to that, he got electrocuted at 3.05 p.m. And that's when he died. Yeah, because it's upside down. Okay. Ugh. No new profiles? Okay, good. Let's press. Why did he call it? Have you ever met the victim before then? No, never. But, that day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is? My, uh, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my, uh, sweetheart. Oh, what? What was that for, Mia? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just feel like slapping something all of a sudden. Dahlia Hawthorne, was uh, Dahlia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm, so it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. He was in the pharmacology department, so he agreed to meet at 249 behind that building. Okay. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should be at 245? Yeah, we were both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Uh, yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the Alchemist of IVU. An alchemist, I see. I gotta admit it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was full of chemicals and strange machines that ran on high voltage electricity. Oh, how fascinating. It sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details? Timing of the meeting. Yeah. You're absolutely certain you met at 245? Yeah, pretty sure. That's the time class ends. <clears throat> but they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments? Yeah, those pharmacology guys are always in the lab whipping up something. Well, it looks like he's right about the time anyway. Witness, let's go on to your, with your testimony. We talked for a bit, then around 3 o'clock we split up. So, what was it you were talking about? You know, oh, uh, there he goes, seizing fit. Then maybe we should hang out again sometime. Hang out again sometime? I wish that were true. 
And later when I went back, I found him lying there. So you went back. Oh yeah, that's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Were you angry with him? Well, uh, that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could make up. Any sneezes. Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one is buying this. I'm gonna take a cold killer X for the last two or three days. Okay. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose common sense is not always common. So did anyone else know that you, you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. I lost my bottle around lunchtime on the day of the accident. During the incident, what did you do for lunch? <clears throat> huh? Well, what does that have to do with anything? <clears throat> you can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Mm, our mini omelets are magically delicious. <clears throat> Yo, why'd you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just feel like hurting someone all of a sudden. Hold me up. Uh, I don't know. I can't seem to find any contradictions. The boy isn't exactly what I'd call a natural-born liar, you know. But still, we can't have him continue to spout nonsense. I know, but what can I do? Well, I'm certain he must still be hiding something. Uh, information right now, it's information we need more than anything else. The truth is, I went because he called me, so what do I do here? Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The photo shows that his watch stopped at 3.05, but the autopsy report says his, it was, his death was at 3 p.m. Right? So that's a contradiction right there, but how do we do this? Hmm. I found the contradiction, but I don't know where to, to present it. Do I present it here? Insomniatic Me just did a 200 bit cheer. Thank you, Insomniatic Me, for the cheer. I appreciate that. Hmm. I think we're going to present the, the uh, autopsy report here. Objection. Does this evidence establish that the defendant is lying? Don't ask me. You're the one who's supposed to know. Oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. I got penalized. Yep, I got penalized for an incorrect objection. I guess I'll present... I'll present this. No, that didn't work either. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, maybe it did work. Your Honor, what did you think of the witness's statement? Hmm, uh, I don't really see any problem with it. Actually, I don't either. Ah, see, it's wrong. Damn it. What am I supposed to contradict here? Hmm. 
We're gonna draw this dialogue again. Later when I went back, I found him lying there. I wish we knew more about Cold Killer X, but we don't. I guess I gotta press on more statements. Hold it. Press again. You ever read the video before then? No, never. But that day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is my sweetheart. All right, we already did this. We already did this. Press on this again. And there was a swallow indicating you should be at 245. Yeah, we were both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yes, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone calls him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist, I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It's full of chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. Ho oh, oh, ho, how fascinating. He sounds like he's quite an ambitious young man. All right, give me shots for more details. About the timing of the meeting. You're absolutely certain you met at 2.45? Yeah, pretty sure. That's the time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments? Yeah, those pharmacology guys are always in the lab moving up something. Let's press again. Hold it. We'll press again, but we'll do the other option this time. Yeah, ask about the pharmacology department. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said that the department uses strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. That's right, and they sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high voltage cables everywhere. High voltage cables. Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle, either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What do you mean? Hee 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 hee. I knew it was too much work for a little girl. Huh. However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is, I... You're correct, Your Honor. So how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Fay. I believe if we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. Well, that would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Huh, of course I know that. Actually, I had totally forgotten about that. Haha. <laughs> now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Right there. As for the cause of death, I see this picture captures it quite well. What? But there's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? I mean, it's so easy, duh. 
Right there. Well, naturally, it's right there. That's... that's... What is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. Oh, so then the high voltage cable... Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm, that certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what re that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant! Let me see, this Rubble, 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 rubble! Hmm, that much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof, irrefutable proof that establishes that Mr. Wright was the murderer. You do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean that the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Ah, oh, you mean... Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright would have lit a print like that. Intent on murder, he squarely pushed the victim towards the seven electrical cable. <laughs> order, order, order. That's enough. I think we can conclude there's no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Stick a fork in us, we're done. Mr. Grosper, my hemorrhoids never lie. Oh, no. Why do they keep talking about the big fat fuck's hemorrhoids? I don't want to think about his hemorrhoids. That's disgusting. His big disgusting swollen black flabby ass covered in big fat fat. Ah, ah, Why? Anyway, he says, my hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. No, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor, at this time, I'm prepared to render a verdict in this case. <laughs> Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth, the whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But I, I can't. I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney and you can trust me. It's Faye. No matter what it is that you have to say, I believe in you and I'll represent you to the very end. Yeah. You already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. Cough, cough. Wait a minute. Mr. Wright. <laughs> Chewbacca cheered, he says that, wow, Mia has some massive, massive, amazing brown eyes, dude! Uh, I'll tell you what really happened. Alright. But I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need for further... I, 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 I did it. I admit it, I pushed him. It's my fault. It's my fault he's dead! Girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake, if you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you should you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that. Uh, uh. What you just said, was that the truth? Uh, yes, I was afraid. Afraid if I told the truth, 
Everyone would think that I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things are currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. Please, please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. Don't be okay, one of Miss Faye. I, I believe in you. Oh, um, uh, thank you. I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Ugh, feels like my hammerheads are doing the Harlem Shake. Oh my god. When I pushed the victim. That guy, he was talking about bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and gave him a shelf. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there dead. Well, this, oh, well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Hmm, a simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But, when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true, even a dupus like him couldn't miss that. Hmm, Miss Faye. Let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without any further delay. Are we clear on that? Yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. Save. Let's save. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. Oh my goodness. When I pushed the victim. That guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. What kinds of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said that she was a bad girl. Um, is that all? Yep. Well, Miss Faye, you heard of yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing this in yourself any favors here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after she said that, I just, I just... I lost my temper and I gave him a shove. Hold it. Hey, tell me about what happened in a little more detail. That guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. That's when, that's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy. I gave him a light, gentle shove to the chest. When you did that, but there was no separate cable anywhere to be seen. Right, there was no, nothing like that at all. But is it possible that you merely overlooked it? Well, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like a cheap asphalt. I believe what's important here is the moment the push occurred. Let's continue on with the testimony, witness. Uh, at that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A loud noise? Well, what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like snap. You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. Attention. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. Ask for more details. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. Try to remember what it was. Well, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ah, could it, could it have been? Yes, could it have been? Hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. <clears throat> he fell right on top of it, and I broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? And did the umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. A cheap and frail, kind of like the owner. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Hmm, Miss Faye. What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Uh, well... Of course. This is it, Mia, the new information you've been waiting for. Of 
course it's important. No, that cheap umbrella is more than important, it's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha, how perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Venus, please add a bit about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. He fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. No, he didn't. No, he didn't because... Well, the umbrella snap. Alright, let's press more. So Mr. Swallow fell on top of his umbrella and you are certain of this? Yeah, it was right there under him. Actually, if it hadn't been under him, I was planning on borrowing it for myself. The umbrella, you mean? Well, yeah, you see, I was wearing his, this sweater here. Dolly stayed up late for nights at a time knitting it for me. Oh, my God. I didn't want the rain to dampen the handmade symbol of her love. My stomach is not to be used as your personal saga ball, Mia. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you want to do a testimony, witness? I think I'm going to present the picture. Objection! Aha! Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on. If I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. Uh, what do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! Rubble, 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 rubble. Order, order, order. The victim, he moved. Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, uh, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want to present this evidence immediately! Faster than Rudolph's farts! Get that shit out here! Umbrella added to the court record. <laughs> but the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind! But! I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial. But, as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render a final judgment. No, 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 no! The... I must say, I still find it hard to believe that a huge pole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Phoenix's testimony is now added to the court record. Okay. Well done, Mia! <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free rock. It was foolish to think... It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have another witness. Exactly. And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Well, who is this witness? It's Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly? <clears throat> I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right, she was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Bravo, 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 bravo. I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Ho, ho, ho. Everyone go get a holly jolly lunch break. Afterwards, we'll listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne and eat some candy canes. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All right, so it's break time. Very nice. <laughs> All right, eleven fifty-two. Just a court. Defend that lobby. Can I save? 
Not yet. I gotta get out of this cutscene, I guess. Okay. 